My name is Ajola Jalo and um, I studied economics and finance. Uh, I've worked mostly in investment banking and development finance. Um, it's, it's, it's where I learned about business and um, personal accountability. I'm a widow and a mother of two, two girls. One is a year and a half, the other one is 11 years old. And um, she took first prize in her school for science and math. So that's, I'm pretty happy about that. And, um, and I'm a farmer. Um, farming on seven hectares of what is now forest and trying to make it into a farm that works it's simply a farm that grows good food that people here in Gambia will need every day, you know, for the time being. That's, that's what I'm focused on. And um, when I first got here, the first thing I did was put in a solar borehole. And I remembered the people that came to put in this borehole, they kept looking at me funny. Every time I would come, they would look at me strangely. And I, would, I, I finally asked them, I said, so what's going on? They said, you know, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but we finally, we have to ask you a question. I'm like, what? They said, who told you to put in a solar borehole? I'm like, what do you mean, who told me? They're like, no, who told you? I said, I don't understand. And uh, they said, because to see a woman or a young woman like yourself out here, you come to the middle of the forest, the first thing you request for is a solar borehole. I'm like, well, it's my mother. You know, but um, I think it's just an example of how different what I'm trying to do. But it's not that different. Every day we pass the women in the garden, they're doing it. It's just how I'm trying to do it. You know, that's the only reason. I'm not sharing a parcel with 25 other women right now. You know, I mean, they have three hectares to 30 women, you know, whereas it's me on seven hectares. And um, I believe in this, you know, because it's too painful. Because I know that it's going to make money. <laughs> Every day, you feed off your money, so I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, because I'm putting everything on the line. You know, um, it's a choice to come and do this because I see a future in it. And again, <laughs> there's money in it too. So, um, and I, and I have to lead with example. You know, people say, hey, uh, if you see you can do this, it's because, you know, you left when you were 10 years old to live in the U.S. You had this kind of lifestyle and everything else. I said, that's why it's even harder. It's even more difficult to say, you know what? I've had those opportunities. I've had that ex experience, but I'm choosing to come here because I want to. And it makes sense. And I can say, oh, I'm going to pull the dimbalas from the That's not what I'm going Why am I not In a way, I'm helping my own self out. You know, I'm not going to tell you a big story that I'm coming to change the country. No. I'm taking this big step and work. I'm, I'm putting all my money, my investment, Luma Ami Yipsili, because I'm not going to All I want to do is just use myself as an example, uh, myself as an example, to other young women and say, you know what, guess what? You can be a farmer with dignity. You can be a farmer in the most modern sense. It will give you enough money to maintain your iPhones and your Samsungs and your Brazilian hair and your, you know, saganilla, so waxi, yep, to topo You know, like, you know, you gotta buy a car, you wanna put a down payment on some real estate. You can do that, doing this. Why did I start with water first? Because water is not available. 
So I had to put a huge investment into making sure I have water. To be quite honest with you, the biggest challenge thus far is um, it's not getting that shocked look on people's faces when I tell them what I'm doing. No, it's not a joke because, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I had a banker come out here uh, to see what I was doing and he couldn't believe it. You know, and um, these are issues because projects like these need financing, business like these needs financing like anything else, you know, and uh, when you walk into the bank and you say, well, this is the business I'm doing, it'll be nice if, uh, if your banker has a serious face and says, you know what, I understand exactly what you're trying to do. And I know why it's important and this is what we can do for you. All the challenges I'm facing right now are uh, issues of mentality. That's it, at this point. As I go along, um, friends of mine that are farmers are already experiencing it. The cost of our inputs, um, the cost of seeds, uh, having quality seeds available to us, uh, having proper equipments available to us, modern equipments available to us. At the end of the day, all of this comes into, it factors into our one single pepper being more expensive than that that's imported. So all of these factors come into play. So I can't be a farm by myself and, and managing these costs. You know, it's not gonna work. We're not producing enough to, to, to fulfill the market. So what do we need? Government regulation has to change. Tax reform has to happen. That, that's the truth. None of this will matter if my one single kanja is, is more expensive than, than whatever's coming in. That my one single tomato is more expensive than what's coming in. So it's not that people don't know how to, how to do this or they don't want to. It's just, it's too expensive. You do all of this investment and then guess what? You can't sell your goods? Why? So that's, that's really where I see the biggest glass, I guess you call it the glass door. no risk in farming itself farming if you throw a seed into the ground you can just throw a seed into the ground especially Gambia we have great soil and great water most likely you'll get five back you might even get ten you might even get more depending on what you put in but if you just threw some seeds into the ground with the Gambian water and soil we have guess what you're fine so the risk and the fear is not in that but it's just having confidence in yourself this might seem like a field for business-wise that maybe a woman shouldn't get into. You don't see as many women into it, but that's the reason why we can get into it. You know, it's, you're thinking outside the box and doing something different because it's going to bring you income. You know, income that you're proud of. So, the way I see it is that, um, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, you're doing something good. Uh, you're doing something that, that is going to make a difference and something that's going to help you. If you just look at it like that, then this kind of work doesn't seem so different. We live in a world where it might seem easier to say that, you know what, I'm just going to watch out for myself, my family and take care of me. But what I'm trying to do here and why I'm here is that Somehow I feel like farming is a form of healing and um, it's a form of sort of giving back um, and we need more healing in the world, you know. We've just come out of something crazy here in the Gambia and I feel like even psychologically have we wrapped our minds around it and um, I don't know, I think it's not just Gambia, but seeing myself as um, just to be grateful to be here, to be alive. That you know, I'm adding my own little small.
contribution to help heal the world in its own way.